How's it going everybody? Steve here and thanks for coming back. Now if you've watched this channel for, for any amount of time and if you have, thanks for that. But you've noticed that I use Inkscape a lot for designs and there's reasons for that. I mean from your perspective if you're new to lasers or drawing designs of any sort, it's easy to learn, it's free, it's quite powerful, but it also has a number of drawbacks. Now understand that Inkscape isn't my normal tool. I use it for just quick things, but if I'm drawing and building anything complex, Inkscape is its more of a detriment than, than anything, even though it is easy. So what I wanted to do is take some time to shoot a quick video out to show you what I do use and why I use it and some of the benefits. So let's get going. And here's the new tool, my tool of choice, Fusion 360 from Autodesk. Uh, this is the commercial version, and if you're interested in that one, you can get a 20% discount in the description below. There's also a free version if you're an educator or a student uh, or a maker, you can use the free one. But if you are doing designs for commercial selling, you should get the commercial one. We're going to start by drawing a sketch plane, and uh, you can see that you know it's just basically a grid. So We'll start from the familiar, so I'll start by drawing a rectangle. Now in Inkscape, you just draw a rectangle and then you subsequently do a bunch more clicking to get the size. Here you can see the size gets put here right away. And if I want to, I can set the size right away. And, and now you can see that that size is adhered to. So if I grab this and pick it up and move it, it's always, it's always in the right place. Let's say I want to make a part that's like a piece of a, the side of a box. So I want to make finger joints. So I can start with, with another rectangle here and my material is initially going to be three millimeters and we'll make the finger joint uh, 10 millimeters wide. And we, we of course want that to be part of the material. So I'll grab the corner here and I'll just snap it to the corner up there. Now you can see if I grab the, the rectangle, the outer rectangle and move it around, that part stays with it. Now, where this starts to get a little more interesting is if I select this rectangle now because I want to create a bunch of finger joints and I don't want to have to create, I could create them all by hand and dimension everything, but I don't want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the create menu and I'm going to say create a rectangle pattern. And what I want is five finger joints and you can see there's arrows, arrow keys here now. If I grab this arrow and I drag it across and snap it to this side, you can see that there are now five fingers there. But I also want this on the other side of the part. So I want two rows of these and I can drag this side down and snap it here. And, and there you go, there's our, our part. Now, of course, right now it's just a flat sketch. So if I finish the sketch here and I now say, I wanna, I wanna extrude this into something that looks like a sheet of plywood, Notice when I hover over it, it's, it, Fusion is smart enough to know that any closed shape is something that I might want to work with. So I can select that and I can say uh, right click, uh, sorry, right click and I extrude this and I can say I want this to be extruded three millimeters or I can certainly drag it around and you can see I can make it thick if, if I want to. But for now I'll just leave it at three millimeters. And there's something that looks an awful lot like a piece of plywood with finger joints on it. Now, the other cool thing we can do here is if I go back to the sketch, one of the things I haven't compensated for here is curve. So what I want to do is to do that is I want to create a rectangle that I know is going to be three millimeters high. And in the case of curve, my curve was 2.2 millimeters, but I also have a cut on this side. So I want to do the same thing here. Uh, so I'll draw another rectangle, same thing. It's going to be three millimeters and 0.2. Uh, and there, there you go. Now, one of the things, notice it's not on this part over here. So what I want to do is modify my, uh, my pattern. And instead of what's, what we currently selected, I'm going to, I want to select all of this now and say, yeah, okay, that's what I want. And notice now that there's a curve rectangle on all of these. So if I go back to the, to the sketch or, or to the shape, uh, and I'll turn on the sketch here to overlap it, you can see those rectangles that I drew, but they're not extruded. So what I wanna do is, is be able to extrude those. Uh, and in the same vein, what I'll do is I'll delete this, this extrusion that I created already because there's an easy way to do this. I, I can select everything and say extrude. And again, we'll pick three millimeters. 
but then I want to unselect the big pieces, the big finger where the finger joint, the other half of it's going to go. And you can see uh, when I'm done here, if I zoom in again to, to one of the, the rectangles, you can see that those rectangles are now highlighted. In fact, I've got one on the side here that I don't want to be, to be extruded because I don't want that, that thin piece of wood there. So let me unselect those. And uh, you know, voila, we, have, we now have a, a thing that looks a, an awful lot like a three millimeter piece of plywood with finger joints in it. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in the kerf video is kerf, things like kerf depend very much on thickness and, of the material and the type of material. So what I wanna do is instead of, of saying that my kerf is 0.2 millimeters, I'm gonna create some user, user variables now. And so I'll go to this change parameters and I'll add two things. I'll add uh, a variable called kerf and I'll make it 0.2 millimeters because that's where we started. And I'll add a second one called thickness. And I'll make that three millimeters. So one of the things I wanna do now is I don't want my kerf to be 0.2. I want it to be that variable called kerf. So what I'm gonna do is change, is change this from, cur from 0.2 to kerf. And you can see as soon as I typed the K there, it knew that I was talking about kerf. And now if you look at this dimension, it still says 0.2, but it's got this FX in front of it, which means it came from a user property. And, uh, and I'll do the same thing here. Uh, I'll call this one kerf as well. And for all of these things that are three millimeters, I'll change those to thickness. And again, you can see as soon as I type the T. So there we go. And that incidentally changed in all of these other places as well. So there's one other place where I need to change the thickness, which is the thickness of this extrusion. So I'll just select that and here I'll say thickness. And there we go. So now what we can do is if, if I put this thing over here and I go and change these parameters, let's say my material is not three millimeters anymore, it's now six millimeters. So I can change that and you can see the whole part just got, got thicker. And if I change the kerf, and I'll change it to something really extreme here, like one millimeter. Now watch what happens over here on the drawing when I, when I hit enter. You can see that it got really thick. So if I zoom in, you can see that thin kerf rectangle is much bigger than it was before. So there's one of many reasons to use Fusion instead of Inkscape for doing anything precise like this. And in the, in the previous video, uh, we used a box tool for this. You probably, you won't need to do that if you're using Fusion 360, it'll just actually get in your way because that thing will only generate SVG files. And here we have a part that if, if I said, uh, what I wanna do here is, um, oh, sorry, I just noticed a, a bug down in the, in the shape here, but don't worry about it. If I said what I really want is I want to put a, a circle in the middle of this. I can now do that. And again, if I go back to my extrusion here, I can just unselect that circle. And now you see, I have a part with a hole in the middle of it. And that's pretty compelling reasons to use Fusion 360. Now it gets cooler than this, however. So one of the things you can do once you have 3D parts is you can assemble them. And I don't know if you've played with, with things like this where you draw a part and it's supposed to fit into something else. You put it on your laser, you cut it, it's just not quite the right size. So you have to remeasure, do a bunch of things and cut it again and do that maybe three or four times before you finally get it right. Well, with Fusion, you can create things called assemblies. And here's an assembly of a pencil box I've been working on and maybe I'll do a video on it, but at the very least I'll share this uh, the SVG files for this on Etsy or something. But you can see this, this pencil box is made up of two ends and four things called side and uh, a part called bottom. And those are actually just parts that I created very much like this, this finger, uh, this board with the finger joint on the side. But the difference here is you can see that the the center pieces are kind of translucent and that's because I'm gonna use uh, acrylic for those. 
and the edge parts and uh, the end parts and the bottom look like they're actually wood. If I zoom in, you can see there's like a wood grain there. So what Fusion allows you to do is not only assemble this, this whole thing, but it also allows you to kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like in the real world. So this, this alone is a, a compelling reason to use something like Fusion or any 3D CAD tool really, uh, because it can save so much time when it comes time to cutting and, and assembling. Because I'm pretty certain that by the time I cut these parts and put them together, this will fit together right the first time. And if I start including things like kerf, uh, I, you know, I, I know that when the parts get cut, they are going to fit together. So the one thing we haven't covered yet is uh, how to get this part exposed so that you can import it into your laser. Now in Fusion, there's this tools menu and normally under make, there's just this make and that's normally used for things like creating STL files for 3D printers. But on, on mine, if you, if you do have Fusion, you'll notice that there's this extra button called export to origin. And this, this is a plugin that you can install. And the way, the way you, I installed this one is I went to the add-ins uh, toolbar button and I picked the Fusion 360 app store and I searched for, for a, a, a plugin called Shaper Utilities. So if, if I type Shaper, you'll see the first hit there is Shaper Utilities. And uh, there it is. I can download this for, for Fusion running on, on Mac OS or Fusion running on 64-bit Windows. Uh, once I download it, I can install it, and the next time I restart Fusion, uh, it, will, it will have this available. And the way it works is, uh, what I wanna do is be able to export this thing as an SVG file. So I can click on this and it says, hey, I'm gonna export a single solid body, which is this. And now it's asking me to select the thing I want to I want to select, and if I just click on that, you can see it's now highlighted, and it got selected here, and I can say OK, and uh, yeah, export this to downloads, and I already had one there, so now I have this thing called Body Two. It's an SVG file, and if I bring up Inkscape, and I'll do that here, just to show you, and if I open that file that I created, uh, there it is. And you can already see it looks an awful lot like, like the part in Fusion. And uh, if I turn off the, the fill here, because Inkscape is very determined to fill things. Um, sorry. And I'll make the, the lines cut lines and I'll do the same thing with the circle in the middle. So there you go. The, the outer edge here, let me turn off the page border, was the page. So there's the, the part now. I just noticed an issue here where the finger joint on the other side didn't get, get didn't get changed. So clearly, I missed changing the parameter, the the thickness parameter somewhere uh, on the drawing. But at least I can see it here, so I know that that this part is probably not going to uh, cut correctly. Uh, I would just be setting up for disappointments. But that's something you can do in Fusion as well. And I'm sure if I looked here, uh, lo and behold, I'd see that there's some oddity down below here where, uh, where things didn't get, get created properly. So not to worry, it's, it's, no, it's, it's no big deal. That what happened was I now said the thickness of the material was six. So where, where the size was already predetermined to here, so it actually made a part that was six millimeters thick, but it's now hanging down below the, the actual part. So th there's a couple of ways to fix that. I could manually go and adjust it, or I could just do two patterns, one up here and one down here, and everything would work fine. So anyway, that's, that's Fusion. So there's definitely some compelling reasons to use Fusion 360. Uh, I've gotten away with using Inkscape in the past because I was doing simple drawings that were focused on very specific techniques to show you how to do certain things. But if you looked at something like the pencil box I, I showed you, the assembly, where there's lots of pieces and they have to fit together perfectly or nothing works, Fusion 360 is ideal for that. And, and it's definitely something you might want to look at. 
there's also a couple of other techniques we looked at here that you might want to know about, namely uh, finger joints and how to build boxes and also understanding kerf and what it can do to your project if you don't understand it. Uh, and I'll put a couple of videos up, up above here. Go watch those if you're interested. And, uh, you know, other than that, as always, go make your world and I'll see you next time.